name is Becky and I welcome you to my muscle function video series. Today is going to be one of the last three muscle functions videos I will be doing. I've been doing this for over a year now and it's time to figure out something new. I originally started the muscle functions video because I wanted to get out there to different people that were looking for bodybuilding and stuff, uh, learn how to work muscles in certain ways. I think I got a little carried away with my whole muscle functions thing, but in the end I thought it turned out fairly well. Um, but it's time to move on to something new. So again, I will have three more and then I will um, hopefully have some time and figure out something new and interesting. Uh, if you want to put in any suggestions, I'd be willing to look at them and review them and see where I can stand on those. Um, but for today, I will be going over the splenus cervicus muscle. I will go over its location, which includes the origin, which is known as the starting point, the insertion, also known as the ending point. Building on from that, I'm going to move on to its functions, and then I'll finally provide you an exercise or two so you know how to strengthen this muscle. So let's get started with the location of the muscle so we know exactly where we're talking about and then we'll build on from there. So the splenus cervicus muscle is actually located on the back side of your neck. It is originated or started from the spinous processes of T3 down to T6. So it's basically right between your shoulder blades and if you don't remember the spinous process is on the vertebrae you have your vertebrae but you have like three spikes on it and the spinous process is the middle spike the one that is pretty much like your spine the one that you see whenever you bend over that is your spinous process okay so it lies on t3 to t6 t6 excuse me on those spinous processes and then runs up your back and inserts onto the transverse processes of C1 to C3. Okay, so just so you know exactly where I'm talking about, I'll show you whereabouts it is on my body, and then we'll move on to the uh, more of the illustration photo of it so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so let me go ahead and... So whenever we talk about the spinous processes, again, we're talking about right dead center in the spine. So again, it's T3 to T6, so it's basically right between the shoulder blades right here. Around about there, obviously, I can't see exactly to pinpoint. And then it runs all the way up your back and inserts onto the transverse processes, which are the side spikes on the... Um, on the vertebrae or each bone okay so we got the spinous processes at c1 to c3 up here okay so again this muscle runs from up here down here to up here and re just remember that you do have another one on the other side obviously to balance your body out so just so you know exactly what I'm talking about, I'm going to go ahead and insert an illustration so you know how what it looks like. So stay tuned. Exactly what I'm talking about, where the splenus cervicus muscle is and lies, I'm going to go ahead and move on to its functions. So it does have three different functions. Now remember there's two sides. So both sides are going to extend the head. Okay, so whenever you go to look up, the splenus cervicus helps or does that motion. Another motion that this muscle does, now if we were to contract one side, we can laterally tilt our head or we can rotate the head to one side. Then the other side is going to laterally flex the head this way or laterally rotate the head that way. So those are the three functions of this muscle. So now that we know the location and the functions, now I'm going to move on to the exercises so you know how to strengthen this muscle. Okay, now as far as the 
exercises go, you're looking at more of manual resistance. In some cases, there may be a gym that has the head strap. It almost looks like the inside of a bike helmet, the layout of it. It just kind of straps on the top of your head and you could attach a weight to it. So it'd be like a chain and you can attach a uh, plated weight to it. Um, but anyways, for as far as manual resistance go, you just want to cross your fingers, put it on the back of your neck, flex the neck so you're looking down. Okay, so you're looking down and as you look up, you want to apply resistance. Okay. This muscle is also good for uh, posture. It helps with posture, so this would be a really important one for anybody that has that forward head posture. It helps pull them right back. So again, you wanna cross your fingers, put on the back of your neck, look down, and just kind of give a little bit of a pressure everybody I'm running out of space I apologize it did cut off the exercise a little bit but that was pretty much it for the exercises except for the fact the head contraption you could also use with the chain and it pretty much does the exact same thing you're just not applying manual resistance you're applying more resistance with the weight um, but as far as this muscle goes that is it for this video um, again I only have two more videos to go if you have any suggestions for the next video series I might do, uh, that'd be great. Um, I will be kind of experimenting. I have different video editors that I'm trying uh, to put videos together with. Um, everything's done on my phone, so nothing's like professionally done. But thank you all for watching the Muscle Functions video series. Again, I hope you guys stay tuned for the next two weeks. Um, I'll be going over the splenus capitis and the SCM, also known as the sternoclastoid muscle. So those are the two next muscles that I will be doing and that will finish off this video series. And then, I don't know what's next yet, but we shall see. Any suggestions, comments, questions, uh, you can always post them in the comment section below. But see you guys next week.